In this show, we'll do a deep dive into those ancient indigenous grapes. Visit an amazing food market in Jerusalem. A few more wineries. And of course, hit some great restaurants along the way. I'm Mike Colomeco, industry insider. I've been in the business my whole life, and I know what it takes to succeed. Each week, we'll take you into real kitchens, filmed in real time. Backstage passes to a day in the life of chefs, restaurateurs, and their teams. The competition's fierce. Careers, life savings, and reputations hang in the balance. These are my people, and this is their passion. And that's what's next on Mike Colomeco's Real Food. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. <laughs> Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line designed for preparing meals at home. We've been hearing a lot about this project at Ariel University to use DNA testing to identify and recreate ancient and indigenous grape varieties that may have survived in the wild for centuries throughout the region. Well, let's meet the man behind it at his winery, Govot, located in an archeologically historical site. We started uh, making some wines and they started selling very well. Today we produce uh, around 70,000 bottles a year and we try to keep it as small as possible, but demand always pushes us up and up. The winery makes uh, mostly Bordeaux varieties like Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Petit Verdot. The Petit Verdot here is, in my opinion, maybe the best variety for this region. That said, we have the other side of the winery that starts to make wines out of ancient varieties that are actually indigenous Israeli wines. These were neglected for many, many years due to the prohibition of wine consumption of the Muslim regimes. Right, for centuries. Centuries. So we do not have our ancient varieties. We do not have our ancient wine traditions whatsoever. So I said, well, let's go and try to find some of these ancient varieties. Maybe they're still waiting for us somewhere in the wild. We actually did a very careful survey of the whole country. We divided it into squares and we started walking literally the whole country where we have rivers or creeks and in ancient places where there were ancient villages. So this is amazing. <laughs> we're about 1,800 feet above sea level on this hill in this area that clearly in antiquity was a wine region. You can see the terraces all around us. And this is an ancient press, basically. It's actually a very ancient wine press dated for 3,000 years ago. This is a very soft kind of limestone. They carved it where they could put the grapes step on them and you have the slope going for the juice to go down into the hole and once it does they actually would pick it with some uh, clay jars and take it somewhere else to one of the caves around here and uh, ferment it. Just in the wilds we can see one of these ancient varieties. Uh, we know it for many many years for at least 20 years and we did not plant it. It's here for many years and you can see here the new fruit coming out. It's crazy. We know today after analysis that this is one of the Hamdani grape varieties and uh, actually the wine in my hand is made out of Hamdani and Jandali in our winery so it's fit. I mean this region grew Hamdani many 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 years ago probably hundreds of thousands of years ago and we're now just trying to reestablish this beautiful practice. These vines can survive without any water. You see, there's no water system around and they can survive the whole summer. That says something about their resistance. Yeah. It's a very, very resistant to varieties and that's very unique. Even the, the olives have a hard time here. This is a very harsh climate. Uh, the, the soil is very poor, a very harsh winter. Right, gets cold. Hot summer, a semi-arid area very difficult to grow. Gray vines thrive here. They love this place. Stress. And we love them at back. <laughs> this gives us the understanding that we're not doing anything new. We're actually reinstalling a very ancient wine industry that was all around here, all of the terraces around here. The valley of Shiloh were all planted with gray vines. 
We actually sampled 600 different grapevines in the wilds. After analyzing the DNA, we have in our hands 82 unique Israeli varieties. Of course, not all of them are suitable for wine production, but around 20 of them make beautiful wines. So we actually see it as a rescue collection to produce some clean plant material and start growing these ancient varieties and make our ancient ancestors wines again. Hopefully in the near future, we will see some of the better varieties that we found coming out into bottles of wine. I mean, it's incredibly exciting. <laughs> We're in the Upper Galilee. Dalton Winery is a winery. They're kind of a big boy, not huge, but 1.2 million bottles isn't small. We're gonna meet the owner, the young winemaker. He's a young kid fresh out of you, Cal Davis, and he's stoked. He's got a lot of crayons to play with here. We believe firmly in the, in the Rhone varietals, so we're planting more Shiraz. We planted, we probably have one of the largest plantings of Shiraz for any winery in the country. We're planting white varietals that we hope are, are more uh, appropriate to the, to the temperatures. Israel, I think, has planted probably 80% Cabernet in terms of reds. And now we're experimenting with Malbecs and we're experimenting with, with Grenaches and we're experimenting with uh, Roussan and Marsan. And, right. and then there's also the whole new field of the historical varietals, the yeah. ones that were planted that, that were destroyed during the, um, the thousands of years between when we were making oh, wine and when we're now making right. wine. And they've been archaeologically excavated and discovered and DNA resequenced and then replanted. And we've got that, that whole exciting thing going on there. And they're mainly white varietals, uh, the Marawi, the Jindali, the Dabuki, all sorts of varietals there that make quite interesting wines as well. Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying everything. And eventually, in, perhaps in another hundred years, we'll have really found our feet. I really enjoy trying to bring to the table things that I like to drink and also to bring some uh, new ideas that are a little bit outside of our more traditional portfolio here at uh, Dalton. Let's start with the Pet Net. Pet Net from Dalton um, is made mostly from Semyon grapes and I add a little bit of uh, Muscat Alexandria, which is uh, a regional uh, variety here. Basically, the wine f finishes the fermentation in the bottle. It's quite clear because we do have sediment, but at this point, it's mostly stuck to the punt. It's fresh, it's uh, easy, easy to drink, yeah. I mean, it really has this really almost like yeah. lemon and lime. Semyon is quite neutral, especially when you harvest it early. Uh, it comes from a, like a chalk kind of sedimentary soil. Harvest it usually right when the grapes finish for Asian and uh, then you get that fresh acidity. The muscat adds some floral yeah, the, the um, aromas, really but it's really just a tiny bit. New York loves bet nets. There you go, welcome to Dalton. <laughs> yes, thanks for having us, brother. Israel, never been. Gadi Pelli, Bread's Bakery, known you for six, seven years since Bread's came. Right. Amazing, you're my sheriff, but tell me what we're doing. What we're doing, Mike, is you've talked to me so much about modern Israeli cuisine. Everybody's talking about modern Israeli, yeah. modern Middle Eastern. And I thought we have to go back to the roots. Like a musician, you want to learn Slash's solo? Go back to B.B. King. Start at the beginning. This is what we're doing here today. We're going to go to Machane Yehuda, a market that's been around for hundreds, maybe more years. Okay, let's get back to food and take an epic tour of the legendary food markets of Jerusalem with Gadi and our Sherpa for the day, Iris. Oh, I like to on. say that this is just garlic and love. Smell the garlic, feel the love. I love that. All right, so we're here in Jerusalem. I really want to see this place. I wanted to see the markets. I've heard great things about this. So who do I tap? culinary expert in this region. Iris, thanks so much for being my Sherpa today. Thank you for coming to Jerusalem. Thank you. So this is like our first stop. We walked in, there's two separate markets. One's covered, one isn't. This is the uncovered version, and it's called? It's called, okay. This is one market called the Machne Yehuda market, okay. but we say that there are two streets in it. One of them is the covered one, Etz Achayim, Tree of Life. Um, the name is after the yeshiva that built it. And the other one is Machne Yehuda, after this, uh, after this one. But in between, we have small, small markets. Each one divided for something else, and it's not sections. It's not one for meat and one for fish and breads and so on, but it's where the people came from. 
community of people that built their own market. Right now, we are in the entrance to the Iraqi market, Jews who came from Iraq, and now they have their own, uh, their own um, market. Right. And this will be a very nice place to start right. because this is the Chaba family bakery, and they have eight different bakeries in the market. Now this one, only for regular pitas, those pitas which are warm and amazing. Also, please notice the ka'ak. The bagel over there. It's, it's the Jerusalem the bagel. Jerusalem bagel. So it's this yeah. big, long kind yeah. of oval With a lot thing. Of sesame. A lot of sesame. And apparently, we were looking at the other market. They don't seem to have a seam. They don't seem to have a place. So I don't know how they make them. Oh, it's a secret. But I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> it's a secret. It'll be I'll revealed tell you about later it. on. Stay tuned. Did you notice those cabbages over there? Crazy round, flat. Right, and we call them malfuf. Malfuf because it's a roll, like you can roll, put inside everything and roll it with the uh, with Stuff. the stuffed and so on. So these are amazing for that. And the cauliflower, it uh, summertime will be small in Israel, but flavorful and amazing. This is the most trendy thing in Israel right now. Cauliflower all over the place. This is crazy. That's the one. Because this is halan shama, and this is. Do you see how fuzzy it is? Fakus. You can't cook it, so you can't preserve it. Maybe pickle it, but that's it. So everybody buy fakus today. So another thing I want to show you, our eggplants. Now, these are, you see, these are the eggplants that we really like, not the long one that you have in America. The long one we fry. This one we roast, and it will be white, almost seedless, mm. and unbelievable. Now I think you understand why I like this market, the Iraqi market, very much, because it's much calmer. Not so many tourists. This one is for the locals. And not only that, each one of us who live here in Jerusalem has his own place to buy whatever he wants. Shabri, thanks for having me. Hi, thank you, Joe. Thank you so much. How are you? Well, thank you, sir. Okay, my name is Shabri, and I am son of Azura. Azura, it's Ezra, nickname. And uh, we, we cook. Very, very slow cook. It's uh, traditional food from uh, east of Turkish. It's Kurdish, Turkish, and Syrian. But uh, it's old fashioned uh, food. It looks great. It smells great. It's a great concept. What am I looking at here? What is this? This is the moussaka. Moussaka, it's eggplant, yeah. stuffed meat, tomato sauce, and pepper. Eggplant. Eggplant, but, but my father do, don't, he don't uh, make just eggplant. Beef kebab. Beef kebab. Potatoes, eggplant, and spinach. That's what looks in the middle, the, that's spinach. This is called kima. Kima in Turkish, it's kebab. It's make it in the hand. This is called kima. Mm. It's a crazy concept. So he starts all of the braises on that eight top uh, burner. One in the gas, and after this we put it all the night here. So this cooks all night long? Yeah. Wow. Once he gets it three, four, five hours in, he likes it, gets to the end of the day, they bring them over, they transfer them to these Bunsen burners. These are from the 1950s. These are vintage, literally from the 50s. Puts a lid on them and they cook overnight in this spot for the next 17, 18 hours till the morning when they're done. What do we have here? Here it's called Cuba. Cuba, it's dumpling, samolina. Inside it's beef. This is with chickpeas. Wow. It's spicy, a little bit. Like a spaceship. All right. Yeah, I gotta go in there. Yes, you have to go there. And the truth is, this one with the chickpea is amazing. So this eggplant, it's so creamy and custardy and flavorful. I mean, it's got the meat, pine nut cinnamon in the background. That's just crazy good. Mm. What is this? Um, the best hummus ever. What I love about this one is it is Jewish, very Jewish because they're using a lot of tahini inside it. The Arabs use less tahini than us. But but on top, they put tatbile. Hell yeah. This one had on top of it lemon, garlic, and chili. Called tatbile. This is an Arabic thing that they put on the hummus, especially in the north. But here in Azura, they are making it as well. Now we are a real Sephardi. I mean, on what level isn't that satisfying? <laughs> You're eating this delicious herbaceous bit with this incredibly complex hummus with the garlic and the lemon. You got the onion behind it. I mean, I could be a vegetarian for like three hours. <laughs> and you see how popular the place is. Very popular. Very good reason. Yes. Fantastic. It's amazing. 
the beach. This place is going to be just the, the opposite of what we had before. We had traditional food cooked for ages together, right? right? It right. was amazing. This one will be a light thing. Everything inside a pita, everything so fresh. If I want to show you the market, our market, this will be the borders of it. Azura and Dwini. Better than your Hebrew. And her story is funny. You said you were in the restaurant business here. Yeah. And she was actually a food critic. Oh, yeah. So she was the critic. She was like the god. I feared her. You see how tiny she is? I feared her. And she switched at some point and decided I want to become a restaurateur. Because she said, well, how come that everybody is having restaurants and everything is so expensive and so on? When she realized she can do a restaurant with no plates, no silverware, no uh, glasses and so on, she did it right there. So that's it. You come in, you order, here's your pita, bye. Bye. Okay, so this is the osobuku, so, so I'm doing this here also, the same osobuku with the red wine and the tomato and all the roots. What she's doing here, she's, she's taking the osobuku that was cooked and usually when I make it at home, you, you, you serve it with, the, uh, with some garnish, garnish some yeah. lemon zest or something like that, yeah. right? And with the bones. Yeah. She take it off the bone and then she added her flavor. You remember I told you it's going to be very, very fresh? You will have an aioli, and you have, uh, you have parsley, and you have some chili pepper, and you have, uh, and you have tomatoes, as you can see. It, could it be more different than what we had before? And again, we are maybe 10 meters from the last place. Just 10 yeah. meters from the last place. Same market. Isn't it yeah. amazing? Ceviche. Ceviche. We got disco fries, we got ceviche. All those onions? Potatoes and onions, yes. Scallions and parsley. What gave you the idea for these, for the fries? I start to, to play with, uh, to, with, with everything here. Just to see what works, what people like, and what they don't like. What and I like. It what you like. With, yeah. Everything here is the things that I like. And uh, I guess that if I like it, everybody will like it. Congratulations like on this, an though. amazing second career. I mean, who, who, who would have thought? We have to drink this. Is it alcohol or not? Of course it is. Oh, of course it a is. little bit, a little bit you know, of alcohol. It's good for digestion. <laughs> Michael. Yes. Do you recognize those pita? Um, you remember the pita from the beginning? I do. It's the same thing. So, so we are in the Haber Bakery. Okay. Again, I told Again. you they have eight. Right. And this is my favorite one. This one. This one, because of my love. How can I say my love? See on, you see the guy? He's a character? Oh, he's a character. Okay, so this is what Sion do. He takes the dough. Just a very simple dough. Is there a name for that thing? Ashtanu, which means the life of the oven. This is something between a focaccia without the olive oil and a nun, uh, the Indian nun. Yeah. Because you remember I told you the market is very traditional. This is an Iraqi family. Jews who came from Iraq and making the bread as they did it in Iraq. Of course, if you want to try it as you should, we're going to put some olive oil and za'atar. Otherwise, this is not Israel. You have to try it. Oof, I'm dipping it in the spices. Like a pizza, that's a smart idea. Come on, this is New York style. This is well, I, was, New York. I was just gonna rip it off like Bronx style. What do I know? <laughs> just when I thought I couldn't eat another bite, which I couldn't. It's just so good. I hope so you have room for one more bite. One last stop for today here right. in the market, right. and it must be the rogalach from the Marzipan Bakery. You looked around you and you saw many things here, right? You have cookies and you have cakes with everything, with raspberry and with povidil and with the coconut and with the cinnamon and poppy seeds. One thing that you can't find here in the Marzipan Bakery will be marzipan. Really? Really, no That's, marzipan here. Why the name? Just the name, aha, because when they started, they had marzipan, but not anymore. Now, every time I tell the guy, please put some marzipan, I love marzipan. I said, yes, I will. One day, 20 years now, this day didn't arrive. I'll tell you why. Because they are Sephardi and they are making rogalach, Ashkenazi rogalach, with a twist. Taram, try the rogalach. Rogalach is an Ashkenazi cookie, right? But they are Sephardi. So, like in the amazing Arabic cuisine, they put sugar syrup on top. Look at those fingers. This is why the rogalach becomes so smooshy, mushy. I told you it's an institution. All over Israel, they're having amazing rogalach. Not like this one. Fresh, fresh and hot. Are you ready for this? That was worth it. That's it. Thank you so, so much for your generosity in the tour. Please come again. Thank you so, so much. My hand's sticky. We're going to have to wash hands after this. Thank you so much, kiddo. The best.
Tulip Winery is the brainchild of two passionate young men who are a good example of the future of Israeli Mediterranean-style winemaking. I wanted to produce quality Israeli Mediterranean wines first. Second, I decided that I want to pr produce not only mainstream wines, but also extreme wines, unique wines, out-of-the-box wines. And the third goal was to, to do something good for the world, for the community. And this is why I decided to open the winery here in this amazing place, this, the place called Kfar Tikva in Hebrew. In English, it's village, the village of hope. It's like a kibbutz. 230 people live here, all of them with special needs. I decided to open the winery here in order to give them the opportunity to live normal life and to take part in the wine industry and the wine business. In the beginning, our wine was full body, lots of oak. And now our wines are more elegant, more round, very nice. The, the culture here in Israel is also changing, you know. Talking 30 years ago, we were like a military country, living for defend ourselves, and today we are living for living. It's, and it's changing the culture, changing the food, changing the wine, changing the way people talk, the things that are important for people. 20 years ago, most of the chef restaurants in Israel was French. If you come for lunch, even though it's 35 degrees outside like today, right. you eat big steak with creamy sauce and, uh, and of course, and you know, and potatoes this, right. and this. <laughs> and of course, wine. nice heavy cabernet was fit Perfect. to this food. And this change you can see in, in the wine industry. Talking 30 years ago, yeah, we, we've made these big reds. Yeah, we are producing now like 40% white wines. When I came to the winery, it was like 10, 15. 10, 15, yeah. So in the last 70, seven years, it became like 40%. This is our Net Sauvignon Blanc, 100% Sauvignon Blanc coming from the Upper Galilee. We have a special technique here in the vineyards. We cover the vineyards with nets from the top, giving us the opportunity to keep the heat, the midday heat away from the leaves. So the photosynthesis just keeps on going. So it just, we keep the flavors in the grapes. So it just keep, stays fresh and super aromatic. It's a great food wine, yep. right? Yep. Perfect food wine. I mean, yeah. you've got that acid, you've got that minerality, but super crisp, super clean, real dry on that finish. A piece of grilled fish, big salad. Yep. It's perfect. Exactly, for the Mediterranean yeah. climate, not only, but of course when it's so hot and the food is light, it's perfect. I was born to a wine lover family. Okay. Okay. Wine was the subject that connected the whole family. While we were traveling all over the world, uh, we visit wineries and to produce wine. It was a family dream. So I decided to, to open a winery, to produce quality wine, and to make it as a business. And thanks God, it we, we did it. Tonight, we are going to AB. AB is the hot new modern Middle Eastern restaurant in Israel. I've been trying to get in here for a while. The reservation is impossible to get. Finally, I got in here a few months ago and just loved it, and I know you're gonna love it. I smell smoke. They're cooking with actual fire it's here, Mike. Fire. You can't replace that. I smell smoke, I hear music, I hear happy people. Let's have a party. We're doing this. I love it, look at this, he's adjusting, look at that. That's like playing a piano. Hot on that, wow, that's hot. And you're making your own charcoal with that wood when it gets old. Over here it breaks up. So it's kind of like less hot, middle hot, hot hot. Right Nothing now cooks it's over just there. Hot, hot. Yeah, right now it's pretty much just hot hot. But we're gonna be uh, cooking up the trout. Yeah. Wow. So everything's laid out. So got it. Got space to work everything at the same time. Got it. And where are you from? What's that accent? You... Liverpool. They have a soccer team? They do. Are they any the good? The best in the world. The best in the world, Liverpool. <laughs> Representing Liverpool here in Tel Aviv. Where are you guys from? New York. Awesome. Welcome. Yeah, can't beat it. We, the Israelis, we don't know enough about what's going on here. The land, the sea, right. uh, the seasons. And then uh, came the idea of uh, opening this restaurant, the AB restaurant, which uh, deals with the same principles of uh, what we have here, uh, but specializes on stuff from the sea. Local, seasonal. Yes, local, fresh. seasonal, fresh yep. and creative. Yep. This is like one of the most popular dishes for sure. It's taking up the whole grill. Yeah. What do we have on that? We have mashed potatoes, asparagus. Potatoes, scallions, uh, cherry tomatoes, and a whole uh, hot green pepper. And then the trout in the middle. 
Underneath it, we have za'atar. Za'atar, yeah. the great spice, exactly. the signature spice of so this it's country. Give it, you know, smoky flavor combined with like the fire. We wanted to bring the Israeli people the Mediterranean Sea, which they don't know. But it's right here. It's right here, but the Israelis don't really know the Mediterranean Sea. They think we have like five uh, species of fish <laughs> in the sea. Yep, octopus, and this is tzatziki with tzatziki, uh, yep. like a zucchini called kishu. There's also grated tomatoes with um, garlic, lemon, and chili. And on the top we've got the leaves from uh, fennel. Fennel, fennel from, yeah, 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 yeah. Super Mediterranean, olive oil on the top. Yeah, really simple, classic. Something creamy, something spicy. And the density of the octopus, the smoke in the octopus, delicious. It's a constant, like, you know. It's adjusting the heat the whole way. Yeah, I mean. Natural charcoal. The reality is this is the energy and it just needs to be there for, like, the entire shift. But of course, at different points, depending on which section of the hub, then you need to be moving everything around. And How did a really nice young lady from Liverpool end up <laughs> doing this in Tel Aviv? Uh, I don't know. I think um, the values of the restaurant. In terms of freshness, localness, and all that stuff. Yeah, it's hard to find something with provenance. Most of the people that you see here uh, taste for the first time in their life a uh, fish that grows here in the sea. So that's fantastic. Yo, Tom. So nice to meet you, brother. You too. We're not done yet, folks. You know the drill. L'chaim, l'chaim. Stay tuned for next week in this Roadshow's final episode. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home.